Hey folks, I'm here at Eurobike 2021, and this is by far the quirkiest thing I've seen at the show. In fact, it's the quirkiest thing I've seen at Eurobike in years of coming to Eurobikes. It is literally, as they branded on the sign right here, the wind tunnel for everyone. Uh, now, everyone might be a bit of like a, an interesting way of phrasing that because it starts at 75,000 and goes up to 225,000 euros as shown right here in this three stack module. But it's pretty interesting what they're doing. So I wanna talk about what they have here and then maybe some of the caveats too as well. Now traditionally wind tunnel time for testing the components, whether it be um, actual bike components like this or testing the positions like the rider positioning, uh, costs a lot of money. Uh, so the idea being if you're a manufacturer, you can go ahead and do this testing yourself. The challenge is building wind tunnels cost usually millions and millions of dollars and plenty of research and full uh, staff on board. In this case, what they're offering is essentially a modular component where each one of these blocks here you buy roughly 75,000 euros uh, and you can use them as you see fit. So behind me, there's a single block unit and you can see over here, it's got just a helmet in front of this. This is for testing smaller components. You can test this helmet there, you can put on different pieces and see the aerodynamics of that from a single use standpoint. That's useful for manufacturers that are making parts. Of course, something that's small won't work with the bike, so you need something larger like this and it won't work with the rider. Now there's a couple of caveats here. Uh, one is the space. Now normally around a wind tunnel you need plenty of space. In this case, uh, this, you know, this setup looks like it's designed to be in a bike shop and while that might be true, the reality is their actual specifications requires up to five meters of space around it, uh, which is normal. And the reason for that is you want the wind to be very calm, not to be hitting other things and bouncing back uh, because you're basically measuring load on this plate down here. So this is a force plate. So as you sit on the bike, the wind hits you and then it changes the force almost like a weight scale on this plate down here. So as you make position changes or as the uh, design of the object you're testing is different, it's going to carry more load because it's gonna be less aerodynamic and thus you can measure that uh, and that shows up here. Uh, so in this case, I did three very simple test runs uh, where I went ahead and just did a standard TT position. Then I did a head down TT position. So something that I couldn't really see where I was going, but uh, you can see that did drop the arrow value. And then I put my hands in a different position up here. So as opposed to like this, I kind of blocked the wind like this, uh, which actually made it worse as, as I expected. Now, of course, these CDA values of you know, 0.58, uh, 0 0.45, 0 0.46, and 0.55 are horrendous from a TT standpoint because I'm not wearing like TT gear. I'm just in street gear here. And frankly, there's a lot of other things going around anyway. So I wouldn't focus too much on this. And ultimately I can't really test this in an environment like this. Now there are a few things of kind of concern. Uh, number one is typically speaking, wind tunnels will pull wind. So you actually have the fans in the back. It pulls wind towards you. Therefore the wind is more stable in front of the fan versus when you have wind coming straight out of a fan like this, it's very turbulent air. Uh, and so what the company said they've done to rectify that is that inside there's essentially two sets of not fan blades, but fan blades that are stuck there. The first set closest to the fan itself is statically stuck onto the uh, physical structure. And that one goes ahead and it will go stabilize some of the air. And there's a second set, like a circular uh, fan there, if you will, that does not move as well. That also helps that. And on top of that, they said they got some secret sauce inside of it that goes ahead and it makes the calculations more stable than you would have in a normal wind tunnel where you're pulling the air from fans that are behind as opposed to pushing the air from fans that are in front. Now, of course, all that data is fed into the computer. Uh, it's measured here and then teams can compare device choices or they can compare equipment choices side by side uh, and ride after ride. Uh, you have to hold each position for about 10 seconds between them to be able to get the values that you want. Uh, it's a little bit short compared to most wind tunnels, but I'm guessing in the case of Eurobike, they're just trying to get folks through this. Last but not least, some people saw on their brochure that the anometer, which is down here, uh, is optional. And they kind of, people looked at it and said, that's kind of weird because that's normally required in a wind tunnel. Uh, and I asked why that is, and it's pretty interesting. The reason is because there are some companies that buy this, in particular buy that there, that don't care about the measurements at all. They just want the wind speed. They said drone makers, in fact, will buy just this piece right here, put a drone in the back and do wind testing right behind it. Uh, clearly they've never seen my wind testing videos because I do that without buying a $75,000 wind tunnel. But still, I appreciate that. And if you don't live in a place like the Netherlands, then you know, you can't quite do that. Now as to whether or not something like this will catch on in the cycling industry, it's hard to tell. It's really gonna come down to accuracy and the company hasn't discussed and won't discuss the exact accuracy other than to say it's in line with existing wind tunnels out there. So it'll ultimately come down to pro teams and manufacturers doing testing with this particular wind tunnel setup, comparing it to their normal wind tunnel setups and seeing if those numbers align and seeing if it's usable. If it is something that is accurate and it is something that's usable, that could be a huge game changer in the cycling industry. If not, it'll just be another typical interesting Euro bike quirk that we don't see in a few years. With that, thanks for watching. If you found this video interesting or useful, whack that like button at the bottom or hit subscribe for plenty more sports technology goodness. Have a good one.